Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our today's saint is Saint Rose of Lima. Historians remember Saint Rose of Lima for her piety and chastity. She was born in 1586 in Lima, Peru to Spanish colonists and named Isabel Flores de Olivia. She was exceptionally beautiful. How did she get this miraculous name? The name Saint Rose of Lima she was given came directly from heaven. Originally she was named Isabel after her maternal grandmother. But a miraculous occurrence took place while the child was an infant before her baptism. She was in her stroller with the Indian servant Mariana. All of a sudden the maid began to cry out to Rose's mother and the children assembled in the room. She saw the child's face turn into a beautiful rose. The children ran over to the stroller. They saw something different. They cried out that they saw a rose above her head suspended in mid air. Her mother Olivia took this as a sign from heaven that the child was to be named Rose. This was just the beginning of the mystical experiences attributed to Saint Rose of Lima. When it was time for the baptism, Rose's grandmother Isabel was still determined to have the Archbishop Torio Bio de Mongrivo baptize the child with her given name Isabel. But the Archbishop who heard about this miracle from his sister being justifiably fascinated by the possibility that this might truly be a miracle from heaven, baptized her with the name Rose. ignoring the name Isabel altogether at her confirmation in 1597 she officially took the name of Rose we believe that god had a very special plan for this child in the religious development of the people of this new world as a young woman her beauty began to attract suitors to deter these men saint rose marred her face rubbing it with pepper to make it blister she cropped her hair short in another she dreaded leading men into sin and lust and isolated herself from society the struggle between them lasted 10 years during which time rose made a perpetual vow of virginity taking saint catherine of siena as her model from an early age rose wanted to become a nun she often prayed and fasted in secret She performed secret penances some of which were painful and severe. She performed daily adoration of the blessed sacrament and took daily communion. Her parents initially opposed her plan to take a vow of chastity. This resulted in a clash of wills because her parents wanted her to marry. Her father eventually relented and gave her a room to herself. Saint Rose kept herself cloistered in her room. spending long periods in prayer it was said she slept only 2 hours per night so as to have more time for prayer she quit eating meat altogether an extreme dietary restriction for that time when she turned 20 in 1606 her mother relented and allowed rose to become a dominican of the third order her work in the third order of saint dominic There was no Dominican convent in Lima, so she continued to live in the hut in the garden. Rose, with other Dominican tertiaries, engaged in many works of charity. She chose for herself the care of the most neglected and abandoned women, whether Indian, African, or Spanish. She sought them out, brought them to her family's house, and cared for them, regardless of their condition. Cancers. Ulcers and hideous sores were dressed personally by Rose. Indian women were likely to be the most abandoned, and Rose gave much of her time to them. She continued a life of extreme prayer, fasting, and penance. On one occasion, she burned her hands as a self-imposed act of penance. Saint Rose committed herself to a life of celibacy at an early age and spent her life. serving the poor while living under austere conditions rose was giving her beauty to god all of the things which was happening was disliked by her mother but 
God inspired Rose with ways of overcoming her mother's objections. Almost all the women who died while in Rose's care, there was seldom the consolation of sending them away cured. The girl's rosy cheeks and fair complexion faded and she became pale and emaciated. When she was going to church with her mother one day, she heard someone remark about her changed appearance and the sanctity which it seemed to indicate. She was horrified because she was afraid such words might encourage spiritual pride. She begged God to restore her youthful freshness so that she might work and fast in secret. Her prayer was answered. Extraordinary faith of St. Rose. For years, St. Rose received communion three times a week. She would have liked to receive daily, but custom forbade a girl to go out even to church unless accompanied by an older woman. Her mother couldn't or wouldn't accompany her to church more. So Rose said on one occasion that God made it possible for her to assist at Mass while remaining in her garden retreat. Toward the end of her life, Rose was able to receive communion more daily. She prepared earnestly for receiving our Lord frequently and even gained physical strength from his visits. The penances practiced by Rose seem almost unbelievable. Her rigorous day-to-day program was a penance in itself and required great strength of character. But in addition, Rose performed many other acts of penance. When she died, she had nine confessors and all testified to the fact that the penances had been inspired by God. The proof was in Rose's humility and obedience. Carrying a reminder of Jesus with her under her outer garments, she wore a hair cloth in which were fastened sharp metal points. Her belt was similarly equipped. Her devotion to our thorn-crowned Lord prompted her to wear under her veil a silver band to which were fastened 33 sharp points, which continually pricked her head. In her small bed, she had two sticks of wood in the form of a cross, on which she stretched a body that was often sore from recent scourging. Rose was not superhuman. She did not like this kind of living, but she believed that Jesus asked the suffering of her and she gladly offered it to him in union with his own. Rose's perpetual longing for God As great as her bodily of sufferings were, the sufferings of her soul were even greater. Hours at a time, sometimes all day long, she would be oppressed by a sense of being abandoned by God. At times, it seemed to Rose that she was revolting in the sight of God and that she was actually an object of hatred before Him. This spiritual dereliction was so terrible as to change her physical appearance. Those who saw her at such times never forgot the anguish of her expression. She was examined for this. The examiners were impressed by her humility, her selfless spirit and her remarkable grasp of all that pertained to religion. Rose was permitted to continue her way of life undisturbed. She had consolations in her life of suffering. Our Lord appeared to her from time to time to encourage her. Our Lady frequently visited her. Saint Catherine of Siena, whose life she imitated in some respects, also consoled Rose by her visits. Evangelization in the Americas Saint Rose begged God to help the Indians and she offered expiation of the most painful kind for one village after another. A change of heart on the part of the Indians followed immediately. One village after another returned to the church. The news spread across South America and greatly modified the attitude of the Spanish towards the Indians. A better understanding between the Indians and their conquerors spread over the continent. Saint Rose of Lima was the first canonized saint of the Western Hemisphere. For much of her life, she cared for the poor, for orphans and for the native population which the Spanish colonial forces decimated. 
Saint Rose saw her suffering as a way to atone for the sins of the Spanish invaders. Toward the end of July 1617, Saint Rose visited her hut where her mother heard her singing more joyously than ever. On July 31st, she became intensely ill. A week later, she suffered parching thirst, but the doctor forbade water. On the night of August 23rd, Rose asked that the wooden cross be placed in her bed so that she might die on it. During her illness, she was observed in periods of ecstasy. Upon coming out of one, she told her confessor that she could tell him about the wonders that God has prepared in heaven for his saints. After saying farewell and asking God to comfort her mother, Rose said three times, Jesus, be with me. Jesus, be with me. Jesus, be with me. And then she died. Her funeral was a major event attended by all the city's authorities. It was a few minutes after midnight on the feast of St. Bartholomew. Strangely, the mother did not give way to tears. Instead, she was filled with great joy and hurried to another room to conceal this feeling. The whole house was filled with joy, and so was the town. By common consent, there was no mourning. So many miracles followed immediately after the death of Rose that the people of Lima demanded her immediate canonization. But a recent papal ruling required 50 years between death and and canonization. She was canonized in 1671, the first person in all the Americas to be so honored. Her feast day is celebrated on August 23rd. Saint Rose is a patroness of embroiderers, gardeners, florists, those who suffer ridicule for their piety and people who suffer family problems. We conclude with a prayer to our Saint Rose. We pray that Saint Rose may we obtain for us constant and generous renunciation of her willful desires, perfect victory over evil inclination, perseverance in prayer and good works, that we may ever please our God and in the end attain to a share in His glory. Amen. May God grant us this grace for which is prayed for. This is an initiative from the Catholic Women's Collective. The video has been prepared by Resurrection Church in Diranagar. Thank you for watching and wishing you all a blessed day.